Professor Lyndall Roper wrote um, some years back that gender was at the heart of the Reformation because rather than it being reforming in terms of ideas about women, it actually was a period in which patriarchy was reinforced, that women were very much pushed into their roles as wives and mothers and had no real status in anything else. But actually, in this book, I've discovered that there's, there's also more that one can say about gender and the Reformation, which is that places like the consistory, institutions like the consistory, the church and how it interacted with women became crucial sites for the construction of gender, the transformation of gender. So, for example, um, in the words that women spoke about each other, uh, often very insulting words, that they they kind of created an idea of what the ideal woman was like and what uh, a bad woman was like. And this repetition of um, ideas about, in this case, womanhood, actually meant that gender became reinforced uh, and constructed over the years of, of the early Reformation. So it's an exciting period where we've got challenge and response from the church and from women, and actually what we see is the development of and reinforcement of, of ideas about gender. The church, the Protestant church, was very much like pretty much anyone else at this time in seeing women's sexuality as dangerous, uh, as untrammeled, as potentially rapacious and needing to be controlled. It was thought very much that if sexual sin occurred, it was the fault of the women. Um, and uh, despite the obvious fact that generally speaking a man needed to be involved. But the, the women were considered to be the ones who were doing the seducing. And so this is how come controlling morals meant, meant controlling women. And, and it's just that the church is no exception to ordinary thought at this time. In fact, if anything, more patriarchal than most. <laughs>